Good evening, parents and guardians. Thank you for attending 2020's Back to School Night. As we embark on the course for AP European History, uh, we will be doing so with a short presentation, which will come up momentarily. First, I'd like to start by introducing myself. My name is Michael DeLuca. Uh, this is my 14th year at Benellan, and I will be teaching your students AP European History, one of the tougher AP History courses that we offer here at the high school, but one that students can find a lot of success. Uh, in just a brief few seconds, uh, the PowerPoint should present itself to you so that you can follow along. We can talk about uh, greatest mo modes of communication as well as what you can expect your students to do uh, in AP European history this year. Okay, up on the screen, you should uh, notice the my name, my phone number communication via the high school, as well as the main mode of communication, email. I do check my email daily, and I even check it over the weekends. So if you do have any issues or concerns regarding your child, I would recommend emailing me first, and I should get back to you within the first 24 hours. Again, many of you uh, were present last year in APUS, so uh, most of this will sound similar as the two courses are in line with a lot of their standards and requirements. Uh, only thing different is, of course, the content. So we'll go through each step by step. Make sure that you are aware of uh, what your students can expect in AP US, I'm sorry, AP Euro, uh, and more importantly, what I will be expecting of them on a daily basis. Again, um, a little bit about myself. I was born and raised in South Plainfield. I did graduate South Plainfield High School in 1999 and then went on to graduate from Kane University with a degree in education specialized in history. Uh, this is my 14th year at Dunellen, having started all those years back in 2007, uh, but I still look forward to a successful year with your students in AP Euro. I am married with two children, my wife Kristen and I. Uh, this is our; These are our two kids. This is Benjamin and Sophia. Benny is 11 years old. Sophia will be turning 10 in a, a few short days. Uh, they, too, are going through their virtual school learning uh, with some bumps and bruises along the way. But overall, uh, things seem to be settling nicely for them as they embark on their virtual education. <coughs> AP European History, as mentioned, it's one of the tougher uh, AP courses um, uh, in the history department, mainly because of the depth of European history. It is uh, not like U.S. history, where a lot of it is coupled into American style. Uh, European style is um, oftentimes broken down country by country, uh, where different uh, cultures, different religions, different um, cultures will ultimately um, blend together to make European history. But it is important that we dedicate time to uh, each of those throughout the course of the year. Uh, the course description, again, as many AP courses, this is treated like the equivalent of a college course where students uh, are going to be pushed uh, at a rather rapid pace uh, and ultimately challenged from the beginning to the very end of the year prior to the exam uh, as a college course would do the same. Uh, again, also as uh, mentioned in other AP courses, at the end of this is an exam where students can earn a grade of three or above and receive college credits for uh, some of their survey courses in college. Broken down into four key components, students will be uh, taught and students will develop these four historical thinking skills. One, chronological reasoning. Two, comparing and textualization. Three, crafting historical arguments using historical evidence. And four, uh, having the ability to interpret and synthesize uh, the historical narrative. Unlike American history, uh, European history uh, does not flow so uh, continual at times. There is a lot of break and change throughout much of the history, and it's going to be important for students to make sure that they stay on pace with some of these changes and or direction switches. Um, this, of course, uh, is treated a little bit higher level than a honors course as the reading gets much more extensive, much more challenging, and students are expected to uh, grind their way through some of the reading at times. Uh, perhaps using a thesaurus to make sure that they understand the author's intentions uh, while reading. Uh, however put, however said, uh, there is no denying the fact that your students will be doing quite a bit of work in this course uh, as it demands it 
uh, their full attention. Course expectations again. Uh, again, most of your students have taken AP courses before, so it is important that you understand what they bring to the table is what they will get out. If they are eager, if they are curious, and they are willing to participate, then they should find themselves having a rather successful year in AP Euro. Uh, it is going to be difficult as they are seniors. Uh, everyone seems to get bit by that senioritis bug at some point throughout the year, but it is important for them to maintain focus. One of the easiest ways for me to do that is uh, to force the students to understand uh, what college is going to be like and what the benefits of uh, taking a challenging course like AP Euro is. Another benefit for the students is the class size tends to be a little on the smaller side. This year we have five students in the course um, and it is beneficial to them as they can work together in many instances to complete the workload. Uh, but again, expectations on a daily basis should be that work is completed by the due date and time. They are on time for class, both virtually and in person. Uh, they are going to participate and be fearless when it comes to sharing their opinions. One of the things I always try to extract from the students is their interpretations of history. It would be unfair for me to stand up in front of them for 45 minutes a day, feeding them in the information. I want them to come to class prepared, to discuss some of the information that they learned the night before, and again, challenge each other uh, when the time comes or when uh, it, it does allow for in class. Discussion and debate is oftentimes the easiest way for me to assess whether or not students are aware or understanding of the content. Uh, due to the pace of the class, uh, if students happen to get sick or are out of school for any reason, it is important that they communicate with me so that they find out exactly what was missed. Uh, to fall behind in this course uh, would, would make it a little bit more challenging uh, than it already is for students to make sure that they're on, on track. So again, if they are absent, I recommend them contacting me either through email or Google Classroom where they can get uh, the information that they need so that they can get it caught up. The course content, um, if you're familiar or if you remember from AP US last year, there were nine historical periods. In AP Euro, it's broken down into four. Uh, while that may seem a little easier, it is noted that the years in between each of these historical periods are rather extensive. You're talking somewhere anywhere from 200, 200 plus years of history in many instances um, that they're going to need to be covering. So again, uh, the course is broken down into four historical periods. Uh, here you can see, once we get to about the middle of the school year, we should be somewhere around uh, historical period four, uh, I'm sorry, three, and then eventually right before the exam, we would finish up with historical period four. Uh, the AP Euro exam is very similar in format to that of the AP US exam. There are two sections. The first section, students will be faced with 55 multiple choice questions in 55 minutes. Uh, those are stimulus-based multiple choice questions where students are given some form of stimulus, whether it be a reading, a map, uh, a poster, or some form of stimulus that they can use to answer the questions that are posted below. They can expect to see anywhere from two to four multiple choice questions per uh, stimulus. Uh, following that, they take a short answer question where, again, they are given some form of stimulus and they are forced to answer three short answer questions in less than three sentences. Again, this is often challenging as students think that they need to write a lot in order to prove themselves, but in this particular instance, students will be trained throughout the year as they were trained last year to get right to the point and write down a very direct and concise answer to the short answer questions. If you look at section one, combined part A and part B, that's roughly 60% of the exam. Students usually, if they start off well, can just about guarantee a three on the exam after section one. Following a short break in the exam, they come back and they do their largest writing portions of the exam. In part A, they are given a one question, 60 minute document based question where they, again, they are provided with uh, five to seven documents that they need to use uh, to support their responses to a general essay question. Again, they will be given plenty of practice throughout the year to prepare themselves for that writing portion. And then they finish the exam by completing uh, their choice out of one of three essays in what's known as the long essay. These three essays will range from the very beginning to the middle to the end of the course. So at any point, students tend to uh, choose which area they feel the most confident with. Then they can go on and uh, complete the long essay question. As the score breaks down, again, anywhere from a three through a five, 
students uh, can expect or likely expect to find uh, college credits provided to them. Uh, and again, that exam will come in May of 2020, 2021, and students will be well prepared for that. Uh, just to round out the presentation, if you notice these two books laying around, just you can understand what they are. On the left is the primary text. It's authored by Jackson Spielvogel, entitled Western Civilization. This is at times a very challenging read for students as it is presented in a high-level college curriculum writing. Uh, so they have the option to use their secondary text, which is considered and called a fast track to a five book, which is essentially a test prep book. More importantly, what it does is it breaks down the information from the Western Civ booklet into a much more direct uh, and easier approach. I always explain to students it would be unfair for them to just rely on the secondary text uh, because it will only provide information assuming the student already has that prior knowledge. Uh, so students will be forced to read through Western Civ and then further enhance their understanding using the secondary text. That being said, that'll conclude the presentation for this evening. Again, my name is Michael DeLuca, teaching your students AP European History. If at any moment throughout the year, whether virtual or in person, please contact me via email if you have any questions or concerns. Thank you for attending this evening's program. Hope you are well. Thank you.